To thee we come, O Lord our God. of conscience. Now, my brothers and sisters, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. As for your penance for the next three nights, Besides offering your daily prayers, that you take one of the three readings as prescribed by the church to reread and to reflect upon its importance. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I am the Lord. This is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See now, the earlier things have come to pass. New ones I now foretell. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song, which is praise from the end. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be the world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, Jesus Christ, you have called us to new ways and new beginnings. You have made us a new creation. May we ever be thankful for past mercies, ever joyful for past favors, and ever more passionate to serve you 
for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Cheryl, will you please proclaim the word? Please be seated. reading is a reading from the book of Hosea the prophet thus says the Lord I will lead her into the desert and speak to her heart she so, she shall respond there as in the days of her youth when she came up from the land of Egypt I will espouse you to me forever I will espouse you in right and justice in love and in mercy I will espouse you in fidelity and you shall know the Lord this is the word of the Lord. Amen. The gradual. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. When he sings a new covenant, he declares the first one obsolete, and what has become obsolete. The second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by all, shown to be a letter of Christ administered by us, written not in ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets that are hearts of flesh. Such confidence we have through Christ toward God, not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us. Rather, our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter brings death, but the Spirit gives life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. From now on, I announce new things to you. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, the disciples of John and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to him and objected. Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak, if he does, its fullness pulls away. The new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. The Gospel of the Lord.
Please be seated. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit, with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing and according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and then there was morning, the third day. These words are taken from the book of Genesis. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Ought to be a florist for Valentine's Day. It is estimated that over $2.6 billion will be spent this year on purchasing flowers for Valentine's Day. A steady increase over the years. You know the main theme why people give flowers is their care and love and affection for each other. It is reflected in the flowers that are given, especially roses. Roses over the years have come to symbolize our strongest feelings such as love, passion, and admiration, as well as sympathy and grief over the passing of a loved one. You know, flowers have been associated with religious thought, and they carry spiritual significance. For example, since the 17th century, poinsettias have been called the Star of Bethlehem, and are associated with the beauty of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Easter lilies are said to symbolize the purity and virtue of Jesus and of his blessed mother, Mary. There are many works of art that depict Mary at her Annunciation with the lilies. Also, the most recognized lily is called the trumpeter, which symbolizes the joy and the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus at Easter. But during the seasons of pre-Lent and of the 40 days of Lent, as you see, there are no flowers that are found in the sanctuary or on our altars. Today, in lieu of this, I would like to speak of another flower which I believe has a deep spiritual significance for all Christians, and that is the lotus flower. The lotus flower is a delicate flower with many layered petals arranged around a center core. Scholars believe the Egyptians viewed the lotus as a symbol of rebirth because it appeared to close at night and then open again in the morning. To a Buddhist, the lotus flower represented not only purity, but also faithfulness during one's spiritual development that rose out of suffering as well as direct spiritual contact. It means so much more for Christians. Do you know that whatever flower we may speak of, all plants and flowers rise from a seed in the dirt and then show their beauty as they unfold as a gift of God. Any gardener knows that without the key ingredients of light, water, and nourishment, a plant cannot grow and survive. 
Lent, my dear brothers and sisters, is a time for not only self-examination, which leads to repentance, but by the grace of God, one is enlightened and unfolds like a lotus as they come into a higher understanding of God, as seen through their love of Jesus, of his passion, and their devotion. If we choose to walk with the Lord during this upcoming season of Lent, we must realize that we will need to be our own gardeners to supply to our souls the essential ingredients of spiritual light, water, and food to grow. In keeping with this theme, I share to you and with you Holy Scripture. Light. We read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 through 5, that the very first creation of God was light. Quote, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Jesus himself proclaimed in the Gospel of John, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but will have light of life. Water. We read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 6, And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault, from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. Jesus was to teach in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. And I quote, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. End of quote. The third ingredient, food. We read in Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 through 13, Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees, of the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. Jesus was to teach in the Gospel of John from the great I Am. He said, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, whether it was the manna that God gave to the children of Israel in the Old Testament during their 40 years of wandering, or in the feedings of Jesus to the multitudes, we see and we know and we acknowledge that God is the source of our daily bread for our bodies as divine providence. But also he gives unto us food for our souls, which can be called wisdom, which comes to us from the Holy Spirit, which Jesus promised to give to all believers. And so, my dear 
brothers and sisters, as we prepare for the Great Lent, which will begin this coming Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. May we all be that flower, that rose, that locust, and allow God to unfold into you the beauty by which you were created in his own image and likeness. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty Father. Through this holy oblation, may we ever be conscious of your love and thankful for your mercy. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. You give us the season of anticipation that takes us from the joy of your incarnation to the penitential mood of fasting and the contemplation of your passion. As we prepare to abstain from worldly trappings, open our hearts and minds to a spirit of true contrition and of loving reverence for you. Therefore, with the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son and the highest, please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with his bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember, O Lord, your servants and handmaidens. May we in our prayers remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray for peace throughout our world. In our humble prayers, let us also remember and pray for all abused and neglected children, all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence both here and abroad. May we give God our thanks for all the doctors, nurses, first responders, and healthcare workers who strive daily to help others. May we also pray this day for all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and pray for their protection, that God would return all of them safe and sound to their families. And Father, may we also pray for all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Likewise, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. 
We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, accept, and confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of his love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, Again, giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your jerks, just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy to part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not wearing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching. Uh, and following the light in example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be
Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our days, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, prior to the receiving of the Eucharist, for those of you who cannot receive sacramentally at this time may we offer this act of spiritual communion let all of us pray most loving jesus i adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present i love you above all things and i long for you in my soul since i cannot receive you sacramentally i ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul I am bright to grace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. 
receive the body and the blood of Christ. Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, through this sacred banquet, you unite us with your Son. May we come to know and love you through him, the bridegroom of our souls. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
with you. tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the side of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy, may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God, these are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 